Okay, so it's a well-known fact that uh, currently I am um, addicted to drugs, uh, specifically uh, opiates. Um, fentanyl is my opiate of choice that I am currently uh, consuming on a regular basis. Um, I don't consume it every day. I use it uh, once every three days or once every a couple times a week usually. Um, however, I'm on methadone, um, that way I don't get withdrawal symptoms and that way I don't have to use fentanyl every single day and, uh, basically spend all my money at every waking moment searching for fentanyl because that is a very terrible existence. Whereas, um, being on methadone and only looking for, uh, drugs every, uh, few days is not, it's still a terrible existence, but it's not as terrible of an existence. Um, I'm lucky to live at my parents' house as well, so um, that does make me feel a little bit better. Um, it does ease the anxiety that I uh, go through on a regular basis from time to time. Now, um, one thing that may be unique to my circumstance is that um, when, when I consume fentanyl, it doesn't make me nod off um, unless I consume a very large amount. Then I start to nod off and I feel that puts me in danger at overdosing and possibly um, death. And so I don't get to the point when I'm consuming fentanyl to where I'm nodding off. Um, and uh, it's, it's not because I'm scared of um, overdosing. Well, that is part of it, but it's mainly because I need to consume so much of it in order to get a point where I'm nodding off that uh, it's, yeah, it's just an anomaly in my case that I don't really get the nod effect um, at a regular dose. At a regular dose, I actually get... Um, energetic. I get energized. I get motivation to do normal things like, um, for instance, I, I shave my face. Um, I brush my teeth. I have a shower. Um, I take care of uh, regular things that I need to take care of, such as uh, any responsibilities I need to do, like uh, my laundry or making my bed or changing my sheets. Um, or any um, arts and crafts that I've been meaning to work on, or any projects that I've uh, been putting in, putting off, even though I know that I want to do them. Um, for instance, uh, today when I when I got got some fentanyl, I got I came home after scoring, and uh, I began working on this uh, on this monitor. Um, I bought this uh, this swivel mount for it. Um, a couple months ago and I had no base plate to mount it to so um, and the the bolt on the bottom was missing so I uh, tonight I spent a couple hours scrounging my basement here looking for the right size bolt that I could mount the the thing to and I, uh, I'll show you exactly how the thing's set up, but uh, hold on, I'll pause it for a second. Okay, so this is how I've got this thing set up. So, as you can see, what I did was I stacked up a few of uh, these pieces of wood. Um, I used some really good wood glue to glue those on there. And um, and then I put uh, a couple countersunk screws on there to uh, reinforce the glue and uh, mount it all to this. And then there's the main bolt. that It's a carriage bolt that goes into the main swing arm of this and so yeah that's how that uh, that works now what i'm gonna have to do 
at some point in addition to, to all this is as you can see I had these counterweights just holding the thing on there I'm gonna put those on I'll pause it again okay so yeah if I didn't have those weights on there um, when I go to extend this when I go to extend this thing out forward I don't know if I can get it to rotate around without hitting this thing here yeah when I extend it out that far like that as you can see how far it's extended out like that now the whole thing would tip over so that's why it needs the counterweights so what I'm gonna have to do um, the next day that I get high and I've got a burst of energy motivation it's not right really energy it's more motivation um, that I get from fentanyl um, to get up and do things that I need to or that I want to work on um, the next day that I do this uh, uh, the goal is to build uh, an additional support structure to these whereas right now this is my setup here I just have a monitor that uh, it doesn't have any swivel action or whatever it's a uh, jerry-rigged uh, set up there I just used a uh, you can't really see it because of the light but I just used a a base plate from a from a TV that I found on the side of the road and I uh, custom made a bracket that that bolted onto the back of the TV and uh, it works or onto the back of the monitor and it works fine it's an MSI monitor these are really good monitors I got two of them as you can see I bought them both for $45 a piece because they weren't working um, if any of you watch my videos or know me personally you know that I'm good with electronics and electrical things so I was able to open both of them up uh, find the problems both of them were just loose loose electrical wires um, cables I just uh, found the loose connections reconnected them and Bob's your uncle problem solved so anyways um yeah so i'm gonna have to build some sort of a uh, support system for this um in addition to this plank here that shouldn't be much of a problem i might even just use uh milk crates maybe stack them up in another another layer high and uh maybe just put some heavy weights in the bottom and and bolt them together and bolt this to the to the top of the milk crates and they'll have a lot of weight in them so they can swivel so the thing around um yeah um my end goal is to actually order another one of these swivel arms and at that point i can have uh, both monitors attached to the same uh, the same stand and have them either stacked vertically on top of each other, rotate one of them around vertically like that, and have the other one horizontal um, so that I can have a programming script on the one and then uh, have the website I'm working on or the game I'm programming um, running, di whatever, diagnosing on, on the other screen or whatever, you know um twittering or whatever you know anyway so yeah um yeah so back to my uh opiate addiction the problem that i really have is that uh, i don't know if I, other people have this but i absolutely have no motivation to do anything when i'm not getting high and uh i've been on methadone for like eight years now and i've always had this problem the entire time that i've been on methadone i mean i've tried to go like two three four months with uh without using any opiates other than the methadone um whatsoever and um the issue never goes away i always have no motivation no no um no motivation whatsoever there's a term for it I, it's uh, i can't think of it right now it's a medical term for for that it's not apathy or whatever it's a it's a weird word but anyway if, if any of you think of it put it down in the comments um but yeah i've been diagnosed with that but uh 
and my methadone doctor keeps on saying every once in a while when I bring this up to her, um, she says that she's going to talk to some of her colleagues and see if they can uh, give her some insight as to uh, what uh, protocol she can come at me with in order to maybe assist me with this issue so that I can stop using opiates and, and uh, yeah, um, because yeah, I really am at a loss as to how to move forward with my life. Um, my methadone dose, if anybody's curious right now, it's at 52 milligrams. Um, and I do that, get that dose once a day. I don't have any carries because I'm an active user still. Um, I do decrease that dose. I'm trying to decrease it once every two weeks. Um, sometimes just depending on what's going on with my life or how often I've been using uh, street fentanyl. Um, Currently, um, I might not decrease it uh, once every two weeks. It might be once every month. Sometimes, if I'm doing really good, it might be two milligrams in a, in a two-week span. Um, or I might go um, one week and one milligram, and then the next week another milligram, then the next week another milligram until I start to really feel really crappy because of it, and then I'll, uh, and then I'll stop um, decreasing my dose for a couple of weeks and just let my body recover until I feel like it can start going down a bit but uh, it's one hell of a long process um, if anybody tells you that you can get on uh, methadone and you'll be off of it uh, too sweet well there are ways that you can do that but uh, unfortunately the doctors in Canada anyways they don't uh, prescribe you to that method of uh, getting off of it uh, rapidly um, in my opinion, the best way to utilize methadone, um, if you're planning on getting um, off of opiates altogether in a relatively short period of time, but you can't just do it, you, you're having an extremely hard doing it, time doing it cold turkey, um, my, and you're planning on trying to use methadone, my um, honest opinion on how to do that is to... Um, before you get on methadone, try to go through as many days of withdrawals as you can, like three, four, um, if you can get that far, just go on cold turkey before you show up at the methadone clinic. Don't tell them that you've been doing this because uh, they might not want to start you on it, but um, tell them that maybe you've gone a day or two and that you're, you're feeling really dope sick. Um, and then uh, start at the lowest dose, which is usually 30 milligrams. And uh, if you can, do not increase that dose. They'll try to push you to increase it um, over the next few days. They'll try to increase it by 5, 10 milligrams each day, um, telling you that you have to keep on raising it until you feel no more withdrawal symptoms whatsoever. Well, in, um, my advice is... Um, start at 30 milligrams and don't increase that for like... Um, three, four days, if you're still feeling like, or on the first or second day, if you are feeling like absolutely deathly ill and you absolutely feel like you absolutely need to increase it, then go ahead and increase it, but do not increase it by 15 milligrams. That's a max um, here anyway that you can increase it at a time is 15 milligrams. Don't just jump up 15 milligrams, jump up five at a time. Um, and, uh, yeah, in my opinion, as, soon, the, as when you first start on methadone, there's no reason to really, go, if you do what I said and, uh, um, start by going in and already withdrawal, you don't have to go any higher than 45. You shouldn't have to go any higher than 45. And once you're on a dose that is, uh, and you're stabilized on that dose for a couple of weeks where you are feeling fine again, you're not having any withdrawal symptoms. Um, after about two weeks is what it takes for if um, if you stay on the same dose and you're not taking any street drugs um, it takes about two weeks for you to stabilize on that dose and then you'll be feeling normal stabilized once you're on that stabilized dose for two weeks then if you want to get off of it as soon as possible start decreasing immediately um, if your doctor will allow um, every three days decrease um, like three or four milligrams um, each day. And since you haven't been on the program that long, you really won't be feeling that 
terrible and if you can even and when you're doing this you you can even let your doctor know that you plan on getting off of it within the next month or, or two like you don't plan on being on, on it long you're trying to rapid detox off of it um, you won't feel the greatest but you won't be feeling like the extreme withdrawal symptoms like you would from going cold turkey um, and uh, if your doctor's on board they might even prescribe you a small amount of benzodiazepines for the times when you absolutely um, need it if you ever are feeling like at night that you can't sleep or anything like that and you just need something just to break the uh, the uh, the non-stop um, withdrawal symptoms then yeah go ahead and do that but yeah um, yeah calculate um, the number of milligrams that you'd need to go down every, once every three days or four days um, in order to get off of it um, that 30 to 45 milligrams within the first um, um, one to two months time span um, figure out how many milligrams you'd have to go down every few days in order to reach that goal and uh, you should have not much of an issue to do that um, now you shouldn't be working during this time you should just be concentrating staying at home and, and doing it um, but yeah, if you have benzodiazepines to back you up in this process, as long as you're not taking enough of those so that you start getting addicted to those, that's not what you want to do. You don't want to get hooked on those as well, but you definitely can use them as a support method, method and it's one of the best ways to do it. That's the only way I've ever gotten through um, cold turkey uh, withdrawals, um, going to the detox center was when the doctor actually prescribed me a small um, amount of uh, benzos um, that the nurses at the detox place were uh, were able were instructed to give me um, uh, once or twice a day at night time so that I could get through the night and get some sleep because when you try to do cold turkey and you're going five six seven days up to two weeks even without getting a wink of sleep and you're <laughs> full of anxiety the entire time you're twitching you're shaking you're um barfing you're sh you're crapping your pants it is unbearable but if you can get a couple benzodiazepines in there from time to time just so that you can get even a couple hours rest here and there it makes a world of difference it makes it so that um instead of giving up after the fourth fifth day um, you can get through the worst days, which is the third, fourth, fifth days, in my opinion. Um, once you get over that third, fourth, fifth day hump, um, then um, if you were just on fentanyl, especially if it was fentanyl, because fentanyl has a, a short withdrawal period, um, it's between three and, and the third day is probably going to be the worst if it's fentanyl. If it's heroin, it's gonna, maybe going to be the fourth day fifth day might be the worst but uh, once you get over that hump of that worst day you're going to start feeling um, good again like the withdrawal symptoms are going to start to improve and you're going to be um, seeing the light at the end of the tunnel at that point in time um, now if you do um, get to the point where you've gone cold turkey you haven't used any opiates whatsoever for about three or four days and you do um, decide that you do just want to leave that detox center and you just need to go go out and just get well again because you just you just can't do it and this is very normal I, I mean don't beat yourself up over it do not go back to your full on dose like you were before you you uh, started the detox because you could a you could overdose and B um, your detox doesn't have to end at that point I mean you can go out and you can use a very small amount just so that just enough so that you feel good again okay because that might just be all you need just to feel good again for the next like 12 hours or so and get a good night's sleep and then go right back to the detox because a lot of people think that if you go out and you use like that um and you you relapse after trying to detox that you're going to start from square one, one again and you're going to have the same um week-long detox that's going to be just as terrible 
um, just because you used that one time. It's not true, okay? The second round of detox that you start again, it's it's not starting from square one. You're like already 50% of the way done the process, if not. Um, so the withdrawals are going to be 10 times less. It's going to be so much easier um, to get through the last hurdle of the leg. And um, anytime that I've uh, gone cold turkey, I don't just go 100% cold turkey anymore. I purposefully relapse about the third, fourth day in after I've gone as long as I possibly can. Um, then I do purposefully um, relapse. And I don't call it a relapse. I, I call it giving myself a break. Because, yeah, when you do give yourself a break and you just use enough just so that you are um, getting yourself well again, just so that you can have a, a night's sleep and you're, the anxiety's gone and you're just relaxed again, um, you're not going back to the same high level of addiction that you were at before. Your, your, your system is going to have a much lower tolerance your your addiction level is going to be much less your withdrawal symptoms are going to be way less you're going to be able to get through the rest of your detox no problem i guarantee and you're going to have another maybe day and a half two days of uh somewhat not too pleasant nights and days but you're probably going to be able to get some sleep um instead of just being up and twitching and everything and sweating and crapping your pants you might not even throw up anymore you might not even uh, crap your pants um you might not even get rest restless leg syndrome um but yeah it all depends on how long you've been using and all that but uh i mean yeah just just remember because when i first was um trying to cold turkey like 20 years ago when i was first trying to do this i was told by some some idiot, maybe a doctor even told me that uh, if I was to uh, relapse at any point during the detox, I was going to be starting the, the detox over again at square one. So anytime that I relapsed, um, I just threw in the towel and I just went back to using for a couple of weeks, just as, just as strong as I was before I started the detox. And uh, <laughs> if I would have known what I know now, um, I would have just used a little bit and then I would have went right back to the detox and said, okay, let's finish this up because I can do it now, you know? So that's my, uh, that's my two cents for tonight. All right. Thanks for listening. I hope that I can help. So I hope that I help somebody here. All right. And good luck guys, because there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Okay. We're all in this together. And, uh, yeah, I believe that, uh, we're all in this together and we can all help each other out by sharing this type of knowledge. Okay. Love and peace, and I love you guys, and I hope you love me. All right, good night.